the house in terms of... Um, it offers a beautiful bit of curbside appeal. You can't, you can see just enough of the house to make it look beautiful through the oak tree when you're out on the street. It's a wonderful design that he's done. You know, people like Howard there in the second and others have come up and said hello, treating me like a star. This is a star to my left. I shouldn't get the star treatment. This guy should. He's done such a wonderful job because I've been talking about this stuff for years and wondering why more people don't do it. Some diehard people like me have been doing the screen design. They need a house that looks good too. Here at Dwell in Design, it should look good. And uh, that's something my wife, Michelle, has been talking about for years. And uh, I wanted to have both, and it turns out you can't have that. We're going to have a beautiful house that looks great. And that oak tree, of course, there are laws about protecting them. You cannot cut down branches, you know, any bigger than this, nor should you. And, and so we had to preserve that. We're very careful with what we did with the oak tree, with the root work and what have you. We, we did our excavation for different foundations very carefully around that and had a RPZ, a root protection zone around it. So from the front, it gives us some visual. That's the north side, though beautiful visual appeal and some shading for the roof but not only on the pitch side that is on uh you know, facing north you get into the south that's where we have the wisely designed sycamores that, will, that are deciduous they'll lose their leaves so they're not going to mess with the solar array that's on the roof the not sycamores. at all so there's some amazing things i've never had this with my solar i've got a solar array that is obvious from you know a quarter mile away from my house people can see it i had six foot four could stand in the back of my property look and go you know, Ed Bagley, what are you talking about? He didn't have any solar, he's a liar. He didn't have any solar in his roof. <laughs> well, they're there because they got a parapet maybe this big and they're up, you know, uh, behind that parapet hidden down low to, uh, on the roof, you know, pitched like this. So they all are stacked up like that, the whole array, 10 kilowatts, and you won't see one of them unless you want to get up on a ladder from the back of the property. You're up close, you certainly can't see them. So you really made no trade-offs between aesthetics and sustainability? None, and I didn't think you could do it. Let me let me tell you the genesis of this, how this happened. I'm, I'm very happy in my current home that William was kind enough to show some pictures. Very happy. And for years, when I started dating my then-girlfriend, now wife, Rochelle, in 93, you know, I said, I like this house. I hope you like it. And uh, Come on in. Uh, very soon she said, you know, you should probably have a bigger house. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sweetie, sweetie. Okay. You want a bigger house, you better start dating. you got to get out and meet some other guys. <laughs> I'm never going to move it. Never. We'll never say never, of course. So then we have a beautiful daughter, Rochelle and I, and things are getting crowded in my 1,600 square foot house, and we're all sharing the same bathroom, and we're going to, you know, either get divorced or kill each other. So we were talking about building maybe a bigger, uh, enlarging my house where I live now. But then when we got to it with what we really needed, Rochelle wants more closet space and this and that, it was going to be house out of scale for the neighborhood. You've been to my current home. I it would have been too much. It's an 8,000 square foot lot. This lot is 11,000 square foot. And given the way that was, was with the sun and where it was, where south was, and with the, we could do a wonderful, at first we were thinking of, I was thinking of doing a kind of a remodel, saving one, two, or three or four walls of the existing home and kind of using enough of that to call it a remodel. And then we discovered quickly that it was more prudent to go from the ground up to do everything you know, from the ground up, the, the foundation was too compromised when we took it down, water damage, termite damage, and so we went from a bare lot and did this wonderful design that William came up with, with his wonderful friend, uh, Scott Harris from Building Construction Group, and they're building this beautiful home, and we, we get to have it all. We get to have a beautiful home that's going to have lower energy bills than my smaller home. My 1,600 square foot home will use twice the power of this larger home that's gonna be 3,000 something square feet. It'll twice the floor space, Yet it will have half the half the water use, half of the natural gas use, half the electric use. And my bills are low already. They're going to be lower, Eric, because of this guy and the wonderful technology that he employed and where we are in 2013. You're going to send William a check every month? I think I should. <laughs> okay, he deserves it. Tell me about the um, the massive water cistern. I think we saw a slide. It looked like an immense. Uh, we spoke on the phone, Ed. You described it as a giant pill. Yes, it looks like a giant pill. Uh, it's 10,000 gallons. I have a 550 gallon rainwater tank where I am now. People go, you're crazy. It doesn't rain in Southern California. A normal year is 16 inches. It does rain here. A drought year is nine or 10 inches. Uh, and that's pretty much where we're at now. But still, there's so much rain. When it does rain, coming off that roof, down all the downspouts, off the hardscape, we're gonna capture it all thanks to his good design. Going to capture all that rainwater, and you will fill up in a year, even in a drought year, you'll get very close to or even hit 10,000 gallons in a dry year like we just had. 
And so uh, the way it generally works is, you know, it rains, you take that empty tank and get 1,000 or 1,500 gallons in it. Then it doesn't rain, you're not going to water for a while because it just rains. And then such and such, and then a little more rain, you get up to 2,500 gallons. And, uh, and finally, by the end of the season, come April, May, you will have 10,000 gallons, certainly in a normal year you will, from the hardscape and the roof. And then you will use that to irrigate. It's not for drinking, not for showering. Uh, uh, anything like that, but it is for irrigation, given that 11,000 square foot lot, all the fruit and vegetables I intend to grow, as I'm growing now, uh, we will meet all our irrigation needs by that. And, and we have a composting toilet that's going in, and we have a gray water system that's going in, and we're going to have, to save more money, we're going to have a uh, sewer meter. You can ask for a sewer meter, so you don't get a sewage bill that is commensurate with your water use. And there are people out there nodding that know this. Wait, tell, tell me about a sewer meter for those in the crowd who don't know. For those know that don't know, you get a bill from the DWP, let's say, and you use $150 worth of water in a two-month period, let's say. You get another sewer bill for another $150. 150, thank you for the water, and you must have used 150 worth of sewer. It's going right through. No, no, I'm irrigating with it, please. What are you talking about? If you've got a sewer meter, you can go, see, I told you, I only want a $30 bill. You don't determine. They determine. Look, it's only $30, like I was telling you. I'm using my rainwater to irrigate, my gray water to irrigate, and only, you know, $30 worth a month is going, or a two-month cycle, you know, in a DWP is a two-month cycle, is going into the sewer. So it's a way to save money and to encourage other people to have less going into Hyperion plant or Tillman plant. Or to, that's why they're charging us, because they spent all that money getting Hyperion plant up to full secondary treatment, tertiary treatment, so that water going out in the Santa Monica Bay is not dirty the way it used to be when I was even in my 30s and 40s. There's still a lot of raw sewage and somewhat treated sewage going out in Santa Monica Bay. They make a Hyperion plant where it's basically clean water going out to Santa Monica Bay, and somebody needs to pay for that, and that's us. And William, can you tell me about the two gardens in the backyard, that's right? Yes. So what's the 